At a heli logging operation, a follower would cut down a dangerous tree. Tragedy would result. The day had started with the following crew going over the daily falling plan, including items such as the location of the cut block, check-in, check-out procedures, emergency procedures, and the location of the falling pairs. Man checks were done every 20 minutes as the crew worked their falling quarters. Faller 1 placed his pack, gas, oil, wedges, and axe near the top of his falling quarter. He then moved upslope without his gear and felled a large cedar tree. Moving further uphill, he felled two balsam trees. Next was a 90-foot standing dead balsam. With no green branches, large patches of missing bark, a hazardous top and dead limbs, there were signs that this was a dangerous tree. Faller 1, certified, competent, and familiar with safe falling procedures, would have easily identified the tree as a potential hazard. He had options such as blasting to safely manage the tree. He made a decision to hand fall it. Faller 1 made his cuts and then retreated to his escape route. The tree broke, twisted, and then struck a green tree. The top of the dangerous tree broke off and struck Faller 1. The other followers heard a key mic and then a fuzzy radio sound. Radio checks were initiated, but there was no response from Faller 1. With no radio response from him and no sound from his chainsaw, Faller 1's falling partner ran to check on him. Members of the falling crew prepared to assist. The falling partner located Faller 1, who was unresponsive. The emergency response plan was initiated. First aid and a helivac would follow. Sadly, Faller 1 would succumb to his injuries. Three underlying factors contributed to the cause of the incident. One, there was a failure to assess the dangerous tree's stability. Not visible while the tree was standing, its base was severely decayed. With so little core fiber, the tree was unstable. There was no evidence showing that the tree was tested for soundness by using an axe, bore testing, or a combination of both methods. As Faller 1 cut through the tree, because of the lack of core fiber, it fell in an unintended direction and struck the green tree. 2. Equipment and fuel weren't readily available. Faller 1's wedges were 70 meters away and his saw was nearly empty of fuel. Although wedges should be used only when absolutely necessary with dangerous trees, having them immediately available is required by regulation. Also, the BC Faller Training Standard says to fuel up a saw before starting any cuts into a dangerous tree. The lack of fuel and equipment limited Faller 1's options to safely manage the dangerous tree. 3. The falling sequence was incorrect. The dangerous tree struck a green tree directly below it. Dangerous trees should be felled into an open area as soon as it is safe to do so. In this situation, the safest option would have been to fall the green tree before the dangerous tree, thereby eliminating the hang-up potential. It's believed that Faller 1 fell the dangerous tree first because there wasn't enough fuel in the saw to cut down the green tree and then the dangerous tree. Before deciding how to manage a dangerous tree, Thoroughly assess the tree and its surroundings. Your life depends on it.